Good afternoon to all. Hello. Okay, am I audible to all? Please say yes if I am audible to you. Good afternoon. Am I audible? Okay. Thank you. चलिए आज का क्लास शुरू करने से पहले आप सभी को वेलकम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एस पहले वाले क्लास में हम लोगों ने क्या पढ़ा था हम लोगों ने फॉसिल पढ़ा था ठीक है आज के क्लास में हम लोग फॉसिल का जो रिमेनिंग पार्ट है उसको करने वाले हैं और सिस्टमेटिक पैलियोंटोलॉजी के बारे में पढ़ने वाले हैं ओके जस्ट अ सेकेंड नाउ इट इज ओके Okay, I will tell in English, Mahalakshmi. I will tell in English, Hindi, both. ठीक है? अभी eco कम हो रहा है ना? आप मुझे जल्दी से yes बता के बोल दीजिए, फिर मैं start कर दूँगी. Okay, thank you. Okay, so as uh, we have discussed in the previous class about fossils, the remaining part of fossil we will discuss today and about systematic paleontology we will discuss. Okay, now starting the contents that uh, today we will discuss is taphonomy, fossil assemblage, systematic paleontology, phy uh, phylogenetic classification, phenetic or typomorphic classification sorry for the spelling mistake uh, taxonomic hierarchy species concept and binomial nomenclature okay okay so first starting with taphonomy what do you mean by taphonomy? Taphonomy is the taphonomy as it is uh, uh, visible. It is the post mortem history of fossil or fossil assemblages. Now, why do we need taphonomic study for fossil and fossil assemblages? It is because Dekhye, I can speak in English. Please try to understand. Okay. So, ye jo taphonomic study in in the study, why it is done for fossil and fossil assemblages? Generally, it is seen that individual organism or a group of organism after their death, individual organism or a group of organism consider it is an 
just a second. Eight minute, huh? Okay. In the case of taphonomy, it is the post mortem history of organisms, uh, fossil and fossil assemblages. Why do we need the taphonomic study for fossil and fossil assemblages? Generally, it is seen that in individual organism or a group of organism consider that uh, consider that uh, this is a individual organism okay when this organism after its death it undergoes a series of natural processes okay it undergoes a series of natural processes uh, in the interval between its death to its final burial that is uh, between its death to its final burial to its fossilization These are, uh, uh, there are some natural processes that operates on the organism or individual organism in the interval of its death to its fossilization. And due to these natural processes, due to these natural processes, these organisms or the group of organisms, their skeletons, they undergo distortions. Okay, they are either broken, they are either, these skeletons either get disarticulated or broken due to which these fossil and fossil assemblages could not help for the complete study of the ecology environment morphology of the organism as they are they are disarticulated or broken ठीक है आप सुनिए इसका जो भी study material है इसका link provide किया जाएगा आप वहाँ से download कर सकते हैं ठीक है आप जस्ट सुनिए now in the case of uh, therefore uh, as these uh, organic shells they are disarticulated or broken within the fossil or fossil assemblages they could not provide a direct study for ecology, environment and the morphology. Therefore, a careful study of the post-mortem history of the fossil or fossil assemblages is required. This is known as taphonomy. Therefore, taphonomy, jo hai, wo hum logo ko kya help karta hai? Ye jo taphonomic study hai, ye hum logo ko post-mortem history मतलब इसका फॉसिल या फॉसिल एसेंबलेज किस तरह से फॉसिलाइज्ड हुए हैं आफ्टर इट्स डेथ टू बिफोर इट्स फाइनल बर्डियल क्या क्या प्रोसेसेस ऑपरेट किए हैं कैसे मतलब फॉसिलाइज्ड हुए हैं ये सब पोस्ट मॉर्टम हिस्ट्री से हम लोग जान सकते हैं और यही स्टडी हम लोगों को बोला जाता है कि ये टैफोनॉमी है नाउ इन द केस ऑफ टैफोनॉमी वी हैव टू टाइप्स ऑफ स्टडी वन इज द बायोस्ट्रेटिनॉमी एंड अदर इज द डायजेनेटिक स्टडी ओके आप इट इज ओके टू यू ना यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओके ना वट इज बायोस्ट्रेटिनॉमी बायोस्ट्रेटिनॉमी आर द स्टडी ऑफ द प्रोसेसेस दैट्स दैट ऑपरेट्स आफ्टर द डेथ एंड बिफोर द फाइनल बर्डियल ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म और ग्रुप ऑफ ऑर्गेनिज्म नाउ वट डू यू मीन बाई दिस
in the case of the uh, processes that operates between the death to the final uh, uh, to the final fossilization the processes that operate in this interval ye jo process operate kar rahe hai organism ya group of organism pe isi ke basis pe either we do the biostratigraphic study or diagenetic study ye processes kya kya hai that is that oper uh, the biostratigraphy ye kaun sa study hai these are the studies of the processes operating after the death and before the final burial of the organism or group of organism that is it is the pre depositional processes and the post depositional and the pre burial processes now what do you mean by the pre depositional process these are the processes that operates before the deposition of the skeleton तो ये क्या हो सकता है वट द प्री डिपोजिशनल प्रोसेस इज इज ट्रांसपोर्टेशन नाउ ड्यू टू ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इट इज ट्रांसपोर्टेशन नाउ ड्यू टू ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इट मे लीड टू फिजिकल केमिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल चेंजेस विद इन द ऑर्गेनिक स्केलेटन लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर हम लोग देखें तो ये जो ट्रांसपोर्टेड हो रहा है एक मान लीजिए ये जो फॉसिल ट्रांसपोर्ट हो रहा है व्हेन द ऑर्गेनिज्म गेट ट्रांसपोर्टेड इट अंडर गोज मैकेनिकल ये ट्रांसपोर्ट जब हो रहा है कोई ऑर्गेनिक स्केलेटन ये मैकेनिकल वियर एंड टीयर से गुजरेगा दैट इज इट मे अंडर गो ब्रेकिंग अगर ये बाइबल स्केलेटन है एंड इट इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड टू सम अदर लोकेशन इट विल बी ब्रोकन अलॉन्ग द साइड्स और इट मे अंडर गो राउंडिंग इफेक्ट अपॉन सीवियर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ओके ये जो है ये मैकेनिकल वियरिंग ऑफ स्केलेटन शो कर रहा है ना इन द केस दी स्केलेटन कैन ऑल्सो बी पार्शियली लॉस्ड ड्यू टू सोल्यूशन इफेक्ट नाउ as they are being transported if they uh, if it is of calcium carbonate composition agar ye calcitic hai calcitic composition ka hai aur ye koi acidic ground water ke contact mein aa jayega to isko kya hoga ye either partially or completely lost ho jayega aur agar partially iska dissolution ho gaya then bore uh, some porous pores will be developed and it will be porous and lighter and when it will be fossilized in the rock record it will give an incomplete idea about its morphology okay now in the case so these are the pre depositional processes that is transportation now moving on to post depositional and the pre burial processes what do you mean by post depositional and pre burial processes that in the case of post depositional we means the process that operates after the deposition of the organism organism or group of organism on their skeleton and pre burial that is before final burial now these processes are mainly we have the post depositional and the pre burial processes are either the epi faunal attachment now what do you mean by epi faunal attachment these epi faunal attachment for example consider this is a pelecypod or a bivalve shell now over this we generally uh, if we uh, see barnacles these are the epi faunal attachment बर्नकल्स क्या होता है जनरली हम लोग क्या देखते हैं जो टोटॉयज होते हैं उनके ऊपर वो हॉलो ट्यूब्यूलर स्ट्रक्चर अटैच रहते हैं जिसके वजह से उनका शेल बहुत हेवी हो जाता है दीज आर ऑल्सो फाउंड अटैच विद द पेलीसाइपोड शेल ऑन द शेल सर्फेस दीज अटैचमेंट्स आर मेड बाई द मेरीन क्रस्टेशियंस दीज आर नोन एज बर्नकल्स दीज बर्नकल्स Uh, are the epiphonal attachment due to which the shell may be partially lost then we have the second type is scavenging scavenging effect 
Now, what do you mean by scavenging effect? Now, as here the uh, organic skeleton has not been uh, deposited finally, that is it is not covered by sediment completely, they are open to the scavengers. That is the inner part is uh, soft, these inner parts are uh, scavenged by the scaven uh, are um, under the, they are uh, means, क्या बोलते हैं उसको जो scavengers है उसके ऊपर feed करते हैं जिसके वजह से ये जो shell है the uh, the outer shell could be uh, broken और uh, मतलब ये पूरा destroyed हो सकता है क्योंकि वो लोग इसके ऊपर feed कर रहे हैं okay और the third क्या है जो post depositional and pre burial जो process है जो third process है वो क्या है bio Turbation. Now, bioturbation kya hota hai? It is the boring by borer animals. Iska matlab kya hai? Main yaha pe samjha rahi hoon. Agar koi shell jo ki permanent sediment cover nahi hai iske upar. Ye kya hota hai? Koi bhi matlab jo borers hai, jo bore karte hai shell mein, इसका शेल सरफेस पे बोरिंग कर सकते हैं टू सो दैट इट कुड हैव कैन फीड ऑन द ऑर्गेनिक पार्ट या फिर सॉफ्ट बॉडी ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिज्म ये जो इफेक्ट होता है इसको बोलते हैं बायोटर्बेशन दैट इज बोरिंग बाय द बोरर एनिमल्स ओके अब इसके वजह से भी हमारा जो शेल है वो आइदर ब्रोकन completely या फिर partially हो सकता है Now moving forward, we have the second type of taphonomic study is the diagenetic study. Now as we have seen that biostratinomy is the study of the processes that operates on the organism or group of organism before their final burial and diagenetic study on the contrary, ये क्या दिखाता है दीज आर इट इज द स्टडी ऑफ द प्रोसेस दैट ऑपरेट्स ऑन द ऑर्गेनिज्म आफ्टर इट्स फाइनल बरियल अब फाइनली जब वो बरीड हो चुका है ये ऑर्गेनिज्म जब फाइनली बरीड हो चुका है कौन सा प्रोसेस ऑपरेट करता है वो बोलते हैं उसको बोलते हैं डायजेनेटिक प्रोसेस डायजेनेटिक जो प्रोसेस है उनका क्या क्या वेराइटीज है दे आर आइदर कॉम्पैक्शन कंप्रेशन लीचिंग एंड सोल्यूशन इफेक्ट या फिर रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक स्केलेटन बाय इनऑर्गेनिक मिनरल मैटर या फिर रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन हो सकता है अब क्या है एक एक करके समझिए कि इसका मतलब क्या होता है नाउ इन द केस ऑफ कंपैक्शन एंड कंप्रेशन कंसिडर कंसिडर दिस एज द सेडिमेंट हाँ ये जो सेडिमेंट है इसके अंदर वी हैव अ ऑर्गेनिज्म स्केलेटन नाउ दिस सेडिमेंट इनिशियली इट विल हैव अ हायर अमाउंट ऑफ पोर स्पेसेस इसमें जो पोर स्पेसेस होंगे इसमें ज़्यादा होंगे ठीक है इसके इर्द गिर्द विथ इंक्रीज डेप्थ ऑफ बरियल ये जैसे बरीड होगा बरीड होगा बरियल के विथ इंक्रीज डेप्थ ऑफ बरियल विथ इंक्रीज डेप्थ ऑफ बरियल दिस सेडिमेंट विल अंडर गो कॉम्पैक्शन एंड कंप्रेशन इफेक्ट ठीक है ड्यू टू विच इट विल बी रिड्यूस्ड इन इट्स बल्ब वॉल्यूम एंड द शेल दैट वॉज प्रेजेंट विद इन इट ये भी कम जगह हो जाएगा इसके लिए कंटिन्यूड अगर कंपैक्शन हो रहा है तो इसका जगह भी कम हो जाएगा जिसके वजह से ये शेल आइदर डिस आर्टिक्यूलेटेड हो सकता है मतलब अगर दो शेल दो बाइवल्व शेल होते हैं दे आर बाइवल्व मीन्स दे हैव दो टू शेल ओके दे कुड बी डिस आर्टिक्यूलेटेड एक दो शेल अलग हो सकते हैं और दे कुड भी 
ब्रोकन ठीक है अब क्या है वी हैव द एनदर प्रोसेस इज लीचिंग और सोल्यूशन इफेक्ट अब क्या होता है जैसे मैंने कहा कि अगर कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट का कोई शेल है ये अगर कैल्साइट का कॉम्पोजिशन होता है और यहाँ पे जो पोर स्पेसेस है ये अगर हम लोगों को एसिडिक ग्राउंड वाटर से फिल्ड है तो ये इसके ऊपर एक्ट करेगा विल हैव अ नेगेटिव इफेक्ट ऑन द शेल सरफेस एंड दिस शेल विल बी पार्शियली डिजोल्व ड्यू टू विच इट विल रिजल्ट इन अ पोरस नेचर ऑफ द शेल और ये शेल ये भी क्या हो सकता है डिसआर्टिक्यूलेटेड और ब्रोकन इन नेचर नाउ द थर्ड वर्ट वी हैव सीन इज दैट द ऑरिजिनल ऑर्गेनिक मैटर्स आर रिप्लेसड बाई इनऑर्गेनिक मिनरल मैटर नाउ इन द प्रीवियस क्लास जो जो थे उनको पता है कि मैंने पढ़ा है कि अगर कोई विद द इंक्रीज डेप्थ ऑफ बर्डियल विद द इंक्रीज डेप्थ ऑफ बर्डियल द ऑर्गेनिक मैटर गेट इन प्रोग्रेसिवली अनस्टेबल एंड दे आर रिप्लेस्ड बाई मिनरल मैटर्स क्या क्या मिनरल मैटर्स जो रिप्लेस करते हैं वो है सिलिका कैल्साइट पायराइट हेमाटाइट ठीक है ये रिप्लेस हो सकते हैं तो ओरिजिनल जो स्केलेटल कंपोजिशन था वो खत्म हो जाएगा बाई मिनरल मैटर वो रिप्लेस हो चुका है दिस विल हैव अ इफेक्ट ऑन द स्केलेटल मैटर एंड रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन ये भी पहले वाले क्लास में डिस्कस हुआ है वट टू यू मीन बाई रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन इज दैट विथ द इंक्रीज डेप्थ ऑफ बर्डियल द इनिशियल द इनिशियल मैटर दैट कम विच मेक अप द शेल से इफ द शेल वॉज इनिशियली मेड अप ऑफ एरागोनाइट जो कि लो टेम्परेचर प्रेशर पे स्टेबल है ये विथ इंक्रीज डेप्थ ऑफ बर्डियल जैसे ही डेप्थ इंक्रीज करेगा डेप्थ इंक्रीज करेगा तो ये क्या होगा इसका जो स्टेबल पॉलीमॉर्फ है कैल्साइट बोथ आर पॉलीमॉर्फ्स ऑफ सी ए सी ओ थ्री इट विल रिक्रिस्टलाइज इन टू कैल्साइट ओके दिस इज दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड री क्रिस्ट लाइजेशन रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन नाउ ऑल दीज प्रोसेस दैट इज दे आर नोन एज द डायजेनेटिक प्रोसेस दे दीज प्रोसेस मे लीड टू डिस्टोर्शन या फिर डिसआर्टिक्यूलेशन ऑफ शेल ओके फॉर दिस रीजन टैफोनॉमिक स्टडी इज रिक्वायर्ड नाउ इज देयर एनी डाउट यू कैन आस्क मी or else i will move forward okay now in the case of the second point that we will discuss today is fossil assemblage what do you mean by the term fossil assemblage fossil assemblage it represents a group of fossil a group of fossil means it may consist of one or more than one type of species okay now if the fossil assem uh, fossil assemblage it consist of only one species type then say s1 is only present within the assemblage then it is homogeneous homo means same and heterogeneous iska matlab kya hai agar s1 s2 s3 aise karke different uh, for, uh, species are present more than one species are present within the assemblage it is a heterogeneous fossil assemblage now ye jo hai homogeneous ya fir heterogeneous assemblage ye kaise milta hai how do we get a homogeneous or heterogeneous assemblage the factor on which it depends is the ecological relationship among organism ecological relationship matlab kya hai ecological relationship 
एमंग ऑर्गेनिज्म नाउ इकोलॉजिकल रिलेशनशिप क्या है बाई द टर्म इकोलॉजी वट डू यू मीन बाई द टर्म इकोलॉजी इकोलॉजी इज द इंटर रिलेशनशिप एमंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स और बिटवीन ऑर्गेनिजम्स और एन ऑर्गेनिज्म विथ इट्स लिविंग एंड नॉन नॉन लिविंग पार्ट्स ऑफ द इन्वायरमेंट दैट इज टू से इकोलॉजी अगर ऑर्गेनिज्म रहा मतलब स्पीशीज है इसके इंडिविजुअल्स है एक स्पीशीज के अगर दे इंटरेक्ट विथ ईच अदर ये हो सकता है या फिर टू स्पीशीज इंटरेक्टिंग विथ ईच अदर ये हो सकता है एंड ये स्पीशीज इसके एनवायरमेंट के साथ भी इंटरेक्ट करेगा इसके स्टडी को क्या बोलते हैं हम इकोलॉजी अब क्या है अगर ये जो है इसमें क्या है इंडिविजुअल्स ऑफ अ सिंगल स्पीशीज टाइप इज प्रेजेंट वेन दिस विल बी प्रिजर्व विद इन द रॉक रिकॉर्ड एज फॉसिल वी विल हैव अ होमोजेनस फॉसिल असेंबलेज नाउ इफ दिस से एस वन एस टू ठीक है टू स्पीशीज टाइप्स आर प्रेजेंट दे आर इंटरेक्टिंग देर इंडिविजुअल्स इंटरेक्ट एमंग ईच अदर वेन दिस इज प्रिजर्व विद इन द फॉसिल रिकॉर्ड वी विल हैव अ हेट्रोजीनियस फॉसिल असेंबलेज नाउ मूविंग फॉरवर्ड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द साइट ऑफ डिपोजिशन नाउ डिपेंडिंग ऑन द साइट ऑफ डिपोजिशन देखिए ये देखिए डिपेंडिंग ऑन द साइट ऑफ डिपोजिशन फॉसिल असेंबलेजेस आर ऑफ टू टाइप मतलब कौन से साइट पे डिपॉजिट हो रहा है फॉसिल इसके ऊपर बेस करके टाइप्स ऑफ फॉसिल असेंबलेजेस होते हैं नाउ इन द केस फर्स्ट है क्या बायोसिनोस और लाइफ असेंबलेज ये जो है ये फॉसिल असेंबलेजेस आर फाउंड एज इन सीटू प्रिजर्व इन सीटू दैट इज एट द ओरिजिनल साइट नाउ दे आर so as they are preserved within the original location or orig- uh, in uh, they are in situ fossil therefore they helps in paleo ecological and paleo environmental study in the previous class i have told you that those in situ fossils they are a good tool for paleo ecological and paleo environmental study as they have undergone very less amount of alteration okay the second is thanatocinosis or the dead assemblages now what do you mean by this these are the drifted uh, fossil assemblages that is they are transported from their original location and deposited elsewhere these uh, death assemblages are of three type we have the indigenous death assemblage exotic and remains now what do you mean by the indigenous assemblage now see we have a slopy area now one uh, 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 means organic skeleton was here it transported here and deposited here now uh, when the death assemblage is indigenous in nature it means that the fossil of uh, fossil assemblage it has transported from its original location say l1 to another location say l2 but both of these location have the same environmental condition they have the same environmental condition okay then it is known as indigenous इंडिजीनियस का मतलब क्या है आई विल से वंस मोर दैट इंडिजीनियस का मतलब है दोज डेथ असेंबलेजेस दैट इज द फॉसिल और फॉसिल असेंबलेजेस दैट आर ट्रांसपोर्टेड फ्रॉम देयर ओरिजिनल साइट टू अनदर लोकेशन बोथ बट दे आर विद इन द सेम एनवायरमेंटल कंडीशन हैविंग द सेम एनवायरमेंटल कंडीशन ठीक है नाउ द सेकेंड इज the exotic exotic what do you mean by exotic is <clears throat> what do you mean by exotic exotic ka matlab kya hai jaise maan lijiye that this is the area where the location 1 and location 2 here it has been transported from location 1 to location 2 okay so from location 1 to location 2 it was the original site of deposition and transported and deposited elsewhere these two sites they have different environments but these environments they are contemporaneous they are 
contemporaneous. They are contemporaneous. Contemporaneous. Contemporaneous का मतलब क्या है? What do you mean by the term contemporaneous? Is of the same time. Now, so what do you mean by the exotic assemblages? That these fossil or fossil assemblages, those transported from original to uh, location to a location, uh, different location that have different environmental condition. But these environmental conditions, they were present at the same time. They are contemporaneous environments. Okay. The, this is known as the exotic. Okay. And the third type, we have the remains. Now, as the term suggests, remains ka matlab kya hai? Leftover or remains. Remains, yahan pe kya bol raha hai? Ki those fossil that are obtained by reworking of sediments from other rocks they are known as remains consider this as a sedimentary rock this uh, had some fossil or fossil assemblage now with time this rock has been weathered due to which uh, the sediments have loosened up and uh, reworking has occurred मतलब ये जो सेडिमेंट्स है इनका फॉसिल ले जाके कहीं और डिपॉजिट किया है इनटू अनदर सेडिमेंट्री स्टेटा दीज आर नोन एज द रिमेंस सो वी हैव सीन थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ डेथ असेंब्लेज और थेनाटोसिनोसिस दैट इज द इंडिजीनियस एक्सोटिक एंड रिमेंस ओके सो डू यू हैव एनी डाउट टिल नाउ प्लीज टेल मी क्विकली Okay, so I am moving forward. If you have any doubt, please let me know. I will clarify it to you. Okay. Now, moving forward, we have the systematic paleontology. Now, what do you mean by systematic paleontology? Is that by the term systematic, you have understood that there has been a system in uh, means systematic way of uh, uh, means describing the fossils that we have obtained now here there are two type uh, two processes one is the taxonomy or classification and another is nomenclature now taxonomy and classification means grouping it means grouping of organisms it means grouping grouping of organisms into different categories based on similarities and or dissimilarities okay what do you mean by this means uh, different groups are made based upon what are similar in them and what are dissimilar in them these groups are called as these are known as the taxonomic group they are called as taxonomic groups okay now as the taxonomic groups are formed they need to be named so that people could uh, of different locations could identify them now that process is called nomenclature that is naming of the taxonomic group so that it will have an international representation it would be internationally uh, means uh, represented by that name now moving forward uh, uh, is the type of classification now in the case of taxonomy or classification this classification is based upon certain factors what are the factors first is the phylogenetic uh, factor then phenetic or typomorphic factors known as the phylogenetic classification and phenetic or typomorphic classification what do you mean by the phylogenetic classification the phylogenetic classification means that here the taxonomic groups are classified based upon the evolutionary or phylogenetic 
रिलेशंस ओके इसका मतलब क्या है कि जो द टैक्सोनॉमिक ग्रुप्स दैट वी आर हैव सीन हियर दैट द टैक्सोनॉमिक ग्रुप्स दे आर मीन्स क्लासीफाइड बेस्ड अपॉन देयर इवोल्यूशनरी रिलेशनशिप मतलब विथ टाइम देर हैज दे हैव इवॉल्व फर्स्ट इट वॉज से वन देन इट बिकेम टू देन थ्री देन फोर एंड फाइव विथ टाइम दे हैव इवॉल्व एंड देयर हैड बीन सम सिमिलरिटीज बिटवीन दीज टैक्सोनॉमिक ग्रुप्स दे शो सम सिमिलरिटीज ओके एंड दिस रिप्रजेंट्स द इवोल्यूशनरी रिलेशनशिप दैट आर बेस्ड अपॉन सम सिमिलरिटीज and the, uh, the uh, and with time these groups have evolved this classification is known as the phylogenetic classification now to uh, have a phylogenetic classification we need certain process or technique the technique by which the phylogenetic classification is done is known as cladism by cladism as i have said it is the technique okay it is the technique of phylogenetic classification ab hum logo ko technique pata hai ki kaise hum logo ko classify karna hai that is evolutionary relation show karna hai but now we need to graphically represent this now the graphical representation is known as cladogram it is the graphical representation okay in this is known as a cladogram that uh, this cladogram which is a graphical representation shown on the pen and paper ha huh, it shows the evolutionary relationship or phylogenetic relationship among different taxonomic group that has evolved with time now this cladogram is sometimes called it is known as the phylogenetic tree commonly called as a phylogenetic tree what do you mean by a phylogenetic tree is that generally how do a cladogram look it is a tree like it has a branching tree like pattern okay that connects the ancestor with the derived forms now this part represents the ancestor and these are the derived forms or taxons now this as it looks like a branching tree it is known as a phylogenetic tree how a phylogenetic tree is uh, identified its main feature is it shows dichotomous branching it shows डाई हो टो मस ब्रांचिंग नाउ वट डू यू मीन बाई डाइकोटोमस ब्रांचिंग इज दैट विथ एज वी मूव फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम द एपिकल पार्ट इट शोज डिफरेंट ब्रांचड लीनिएजेस ओके दिस इज नोन एज द डाइकोटोमस ब्रांचिंग दिस शोज द प्रिमिटिव or the ancestor with the primitive character and here we have the derived characters okay this shows the dichotomous branching this is known as a phylogenetic tree like now here as you can see it is a cladogram this cladogram represents a dichotomous branch in this we can see that from a uh from the eukaryotes we have the fish the amphibians with evolution we uh, sh have all these lineages okay so this shows a cladogram that is the graphical representation of the evolutionary relationship of the evolutionary relationship okay now moving forward 
we have the phenetic classification or typomorphic classification now what do you mean by the phenetic classification it is uh, mainly the uh, uh, based upon observed morphological characters among the fossil groups that is the fossil groups are classified based on the observed morphological character what do you mean by the observed morphological character generally the fossils that we get the fossils that we are getting at present these fossils they generally show some similarity or dissimilarity in their morphology they show some similarity or dissimilarity in their morphology okay now these observed morphological characters are used to differentiate different fossil groups and this is known as the phenetic or typomorphic classification like for example as we see in the fossil bivalves they are divided into different types based on their dentition pattern okay this uh, uh, and this is known as the phenetic or typomorphic classification like for example you can see that in the bivalves either these are the bivalves they either have different types of dentition pattern okay they have different types of dentition pattern they have different types of dentition pattern and depending on these dentition pattern they are classified into different types we will study about different types of dentition pattern of the bivalve in the chapter of pelycycle okay now in the case of the next point is taxonomic hierarchy now in case of taxonomic hierarchy what do you mean by a hierarchy okay hierarchy ka matlab kya hota hai as it means that arranging different taxons uh, in increasing order lower to higher order or ascending order this is known as a hierarchy a in the case of taxonomic hierarchy or the taxonomic classification was mainly done by linnaeus linnaeus he classified uh, different taxonomic uh, ranks as from lower to higher they are the species genus order class and kingdom now later on two more ranks were added they are the family and phylum the family it was added between genus and order and phylum it was added between class and kingdom now from exam point of view this is very important as it may come that it may be asked that which rank is before or lower than the given rank okay now you have to remember this this there are seven total ranks species genus family order class phylum and kingdom okay now moving forward we have the species concept now as we have seen about the taxonomic hierarchy where we see that species is the smallest or the fundamental or the basic unit of taxonomic classification it is the basic unit of taxonomic classification so species what is species is that it is the basic or fundamental unit of taxonomic classification sometimes questions come from that this part what is species okay now as uh, we have uh, uh, now we have to differentiate in different types of species now the species the main differentiating factor is morphology so when a morphology is used to classify different types of species then it is known as morpho species that is morpho species means species classified based on morphology now in the case of morpho species in the case of morpho species just a second yes in the case of morpho species we have two types that is homeomorph 
in the case of morpho species in the case of morpho species we have two type that is homeomorph and heteromorphs what do you mean by a homeomorph is um, homeomorph is that when there are two identical species or genus that is two different species or genera that uh, due to same environmental condition they develop some identical morphological characteristics then the phenomena is known as homeomorphism here as in the figure you can see that here there is species 1 species 2 they have different environmental condition so different morphologies of s1 and s2 are present this s1 is in a, a particular environmental condition s2 is another in another environmental condition due to which they have different morphological characteristics now as species 1 and 2 they come within a single environmental condition or like a uh, uh, common life habitat they have a common life habit then they will develop some identical morphologies this is uh, uh, known as homeomorphism okay if you have any problem please feel free to ask i will answer your question okay now in the case of dimorphism or polymorphism it is called as heteromorphism now dimorphism or polymorphism kya hota hai ye kya hai isme this species is present it is in a sing, uh, particular environmental condition it has a environmental condition say e1 now the environmental condition it differentiates uh, two environmental conditions are there e2 and e3 now two uh, the individuals of these species, uh, species they will segregate those that can sustain in the environmental condition 2 will form species 2 those that can sustain in the environmental condition say 3 that can form species 3 like uh, for example if a species 1 is under environmental condition 1 now with time the temperature uh, increases and another environment form where the temperature remains the same now here uh, s2 is it can adapt the increased temperature condition environment so they will move to that part and here this species they will move to the uh, another temperature condition okay uh, then we have a uh, different types of species that is formed from us uh, from the individuals of a single species this is known as a dimorphism or polymorphism as they shows different morphological characters okay they do not have any common morphological characters so they are dimorphic or polymorphic in nature and the phenomena by which it happens is called dimorphism or polymorphism now what do you mean by the term form genera and form species this is important okay what do you mean by the term form genera and form species now form genera and form species why to which it is applied now as we know that in the fossil record the plants and animals that are fossilized they most of the time they get uh, fragmented as I, I have told you in the previous slides that uh, during the uh, uh, taphono uh, taphonomy there are different processes that operates that is the pre-depositional, post-depositional, pre-burial and after the final burial that leads to disarticulation or fragmentation of the uh, different parts of the plants and animals okay on these uh, 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 the processes are operating due to fragmentation sometimes we find th uh, the leaf of a particular plant then we find the uh, fruit or we uh, may find a bone okay like this when the individual or fragmented parts are found within the fossil record 
it is difficult to use these uh, to reconstruct the whole plant or animal so uh, they are uh, represented as form genus or form species to make the nomenclature easy they are given a name which is known as the form genus or form species they represent form genus and form species now moving forward is the last part of our uh, today's class is binomial system of nomenclature now what do you mean by the binomial system of nomenclature as the term binomial it you can understand that uh, the name has two parts now the first part is the generic name and the second part is the trivial or specific name now for example as we have here homo sapiens in case of homo sapiens the first part it is the generic name or the genus and the second part it represents the specific or trivial name okay this is uh, called the binomial system of nomenclature always remember that the, these uh, um, scientific names are represented in greek or latin words or latinized english word and while writing they are underlined because while writing we cannot represent in a latin uh, handwriting so they are underlined and always the first letter of the generic name is capital always it is capital now while the binomial system of nomenclature is uh, being discussed i should tell that uh, in the case of uh, the uh, scientific naming first we have the name of the species we have the species name we have the species name followed by the author author's name followed by the name of the author followed by the year of its first publication okay this is the method it is written like now in the case here as it is homo sapiens we have the generic name homo and the specific or the trivial name uh, the sapiens now within the genus we may have different types of species like for example say here we have the genus that is homo first we have the habilis homo habilis it evolved into homo represented by h homo erectus then it evolved into two lineages known as the homo sapiens and the homo ni and dartal ensis okay neanderthal uh, neander neanderthal neanderthals now in this case this is the extinct form and in the homo sapiens we get them till recent here as you can see that within a genus we have different species homo habilis homo erectus homo sapiens ho homo neanderthalensis all these and also here it shows an evolutionary trend with time so this is a phylogenetic uh, classification okay in which the morphology is also a factor by which the classification is done so this is the uh, last part of the slide for today now is there any question or any doubt you can ask
I will wait for two minutes after which I will end the class. Students, if there is any doubt, please ask. अगर आपको कुछ समझ में नहीं आया हो तो आप पूछ लीजिए मैं बता दूंगी ओके सो आई एम नॉट गेटिंग एनी क्वेश्चन आई थिंक आप लोगों को कोई डाउट नहीं है आज के क्लास पे ओके ओके देन आई विल एंड द क्लास टूडे दिस वॉज ऑल ओके दीपांशा यू आर आस्किंग अबाउट फॉर्म जेनेरा एंड फॉर्म स्पीशीज या श्योर पार्ट ऑफ अ प्लांट से लीफ और इट्स फ्रूट मे बी प्रिजर्व ओके और the stem may be preserved as the petrified wood fossil or the leaf may be preserved as the carboni uh, carbonized film all these may be preserved within the uh, rock record they uh, or we most of the time get bones of the vertebrates uh, shells of uh, different organism say pelecypod we get uh, that of the trilobites okay the trilobites they um, uh, are generally preserved now in the case when these fragmented parts are preserved within the fossil record from these fragments it is difficult for us eco ho raha hai acha dekhiye from this fragments uh, it is difficult for us to reconstruct the complete plant as uh, from the leaf from a single leaf or from the fruits or stem we cannot reconstruct a complete plant or from a uh, uh, bones or any other uh, fragmented part a complete uh, plant or animal could not be uh, reconstructed it is very difficult and therefore the paleontologist what they have done is they have named these fragmented parts as form genera and form species ठीक है दिस इज नोन एज फॉर्म जेनेरा एंड फॉर्म स्पीशीज ओके दीपांशा मीना यू आर क्लियर एनी डाउट स्टूडेंट्स यू कैन आस्क और आई विल एंड द क्लास आई विल वेट फॉर अ मिनट प्लीज इफ देयर इज एनी डाउट फील फ्री टू आस्क Okay then, I am not getting any query from you, so I am ending the class today, and thank you for being with me. Previous classes में हम और भी topics पढ़ेंगे. आप channel को follow कीजिए. आपको updates मिलते रहेंगे. और इस part का जो भी study material है, इसे upload कर दिया जाएगा. आप उसके लिंक से डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं एंड डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब शेयर कीजिए जितना हो सके ताकि दूसरों को भी ये पार्ट मिल जाए वो समझ पाए ओके ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू स्टूडेंट्स